say. Are you gonna are you gonna like keep that shrouded in mystery or uh, is that I, you, you gotta have something in your mind, right? That you wanted to say, or is that just left up to the imagination? Uh, well, it's it was I guess it wasn't so much about what he was about to say. It was more about the. Uh, Solved his uh, existential crisis. <laughs> 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 so, um, uh, I, I also one other thing. Um, so, you may have recognized uh, the last name and also a title credit. Uh, but uh, your father is uh, uh, the great Peter Hyams, Woo! and uh, he defeated this film. It looks Woo! beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. So, can you talk a little bit about that? About uh, how you got him involved, and uh, you know how it was working with your father on this film. Yeah, actually, um, well, in, in truth, he was involved before I was, actually. He, uh, the producer, Moshe Diamant, had, who they had worked with uh, on several projects, and at a certain point in time, there was a different guy who was going to be directing it, and uh, my dad and Moshe was agreed to DP it, basically, because he wanted to try doing that without uh, outside of the record, trying to shoot something. And so he agreed to do it. And they had a different director involved, and then I think he, he probably realized that might have been tough, so he, so he lobbied to get me hired. <laughs> <laughs> so eventually, uh, I mean, Moshe was familiar with uh, documentaries and things I had done, so he, I think he felt all right about hiring me on. And uh, it, was, uh, it was a lot of fun, to, you know, my dad. I think it was just, uh, yeah, unfortunately, we didn't have a film print in time. If you guys saw a film print, yeah, he, he did a really wonderful job on it. Um, you know, when you get the, the full, we did a full print of it and everything. I just was color time this last week, so uh, it's in the theater. You'll get a look at that, but you did a great job. Well, I, I don't want to manip, uh, monopolize all the questions here, so I, I think there's probably some questions in the audience. Uh, uh, anybody got a question for any of our, our guests here on the stage? Right there in the center. I'd like to ask Dolph about this uh, whole return to the 80s style of action, 80s and 90s, and where you think that's come back. and. I mean, obviously, you're part of the Expendables, so what do you think you feel this? <clears throat> yeah, um, well, first I'd like to say I really enjoyed the picture. Great job, John. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, you're right. It does have, like, a return to the 80s uh, feel to it. It's like, uh, well, with a sort of turbocharged uh, sort of ver his version of it. But, yeah, I think, you know, um, you know, look at Andre, Andre's a real fighter, and you know, people have seen now in MMA and UFC, people actually see what one punch can do to somebody, uh, to somebody's nose, for instance. So uh, I think that, you know, things go in, in circles, and I think people are a little more uh, tuned into the uh, realities of hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat because of UFC and MMA, and I think, you know, the, the uh, directors of the world, they kind of respond to that a little bit. I mean, it's almost like you cannot do it too, too over the top these days. People aren't going to believe it, you know, like they did perhaps uh, 10 years ago. Maybe that's one of the reasons. <clears throat> In the Expendables, um, and Mr. Stallone, of course, you know, liking to blow things up and uh, using double loads in every gun. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's the same. It's, uh, this is very much hand-to-hand -hand combat oriented, but Expendables is all, we have a lot of fights and a lot of shootouts, and it's also, you know, uh, very realistic. And I think people are digging that these days, which is good for me, because I can't do a backflip, sorry. <laughs> Too damn cold! <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so I want to ask uh, Andre, first of all, Andre, I, I thought you were amazing in the film, and I want to see a lot more of uh, you. So, Andre, this is a long path to a long and, and bloody career. So, um, uh, so you're relatively new to acting, so uh, how, how did you find the, the transition from the fighting world to the, uh, to the fake fighting world? Uh, I had my fight and my fight against tough guy, Russian guy, Indian kind of general, and he kicked my butt. And uh, I had a couple weeks off, and my uh, manager called me and said, I have good news for you. Um, actually, been a movie with Ralph and Van Damme, and I said, I probably give me, because uh, when I was a kid, I had a lot of posters in my room. And things came through. And when I flew in um, Bulgaria, when I met, met all guys, um, 
uh, I felt like, you know, like I, I know everybody for a long time. It was fun for me. And actually, John, his father, Peter, gave me a lot of like uh, tips what I have to do, right? How like camera. So I had a lot of fun and it was great experience for me. Uh, we got another question right up here. Uh, yeah, I guess, uh, what was it like for all three of you to work with uh, Van Dam again, or, and if you minded being Bill third? <laughs> <laughs> well, since you say again, I guess you're asking me. Because, uh, <laughs> I don't think you work with him. No, neither of you. Uh, time cop. Well, maybe you were on the, the Peter Himes was. Yeah, I didn't work. Uh, well, you know, it's uh, I haven't done a lot of sequels. Actually, uh, I think I've done one. This is my first one. You know, the people who are these days are into doing a lot of sequels, preferably one after the other. But it's the first one where I kind of play the same character more or less, and and it's uh, it's kind of it's kind of weird. You know, it's like you're in the uniform and you're going, holy shit, this was what like what. 16 years ago or something, <laughs> uh, but um, I know Jean-Claude, you know, personally, and I, it was fun to work with him again, and I think, you know, uh, yeah, I, I was working on a different picture, I was working on the Expendables a little bit, preparing for that, and I was doing another film, so I couldn't really, you know, uh, we wish I had more, more work on the picture, because it's great to work with John, and I do think that he made a sequence with uh, me and Van Damme, you know, very, very good, and I think, you know, that was... <laughs> I think people love it. Who's next? Right there in the center. Uh, where did you shoot? Uh, we shot in uh, Sofia, Bulgaria. So, uh, and then we flew to Langley, Virginia to get those established. <laughs> 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 no, it was all it was all in Sofia. So that was kind of, um, that was, we knew we were going to Bulgaria from the get-go, and at least I did, you know, right when the script was sent to me. So I was happy at least that, that the script was not uh, something that, it wasn't taking place in Florida and shooting in Bulgaria. It was, like we, it was supposed to be rugged terrain, and uh, they had these, um, they had some really interesting locations there, and that, that place that we shot, all of that, uh, the place that was essentially our Chernobyl is this abandoned steel plant called uh, Creepy Coxy, which is uh, used to be the primary employer of, uh, of a lot of people with Sophia. And it's, it's this really amazing looking structure. I mean, it looks like, it looks like something out of Brazil, basically. It's, you know, if you walk around, the thing stretches for miles. So when we first started scouting that place, I uh, I realized that this was just a, you know, we didn't we didn't build barely anything, but it wasn't a single, there was some actual sets that we built that were almost sets within existing locations. It was nothing done on a sound stage in the entire movie. It was all just, uh, it was all just, uh, it was all strictly location work. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, uh, it was good. That was, you know, we, uh, we got a lot of production value out of it. Andre, how did you find uh, going from MMA fighting to acting and having to reshoot shots? And, and the guys were like, kind of like, did you? <laughs> first of all, uh, first of all my, my English not that good, that good, but that's probably John gave me just six sentences in one. Yes, yes, no, no, I will feel like you're good. <laughs> I guess I was very disciplined actor and uh, for choreography I did like we did every evening and it was fun for me, you know. It was something new for me, very interesting and uh, uh, previous question how what about uh, Mr. Van Dam? For example, if it was fun of course work with him and um, for example everybody had a lunch break from 12 for, 12.30 till uh, 1.15. Mr. Van Damme had from 1.15 till 2 o'clock, you know. And he wants, uh, uh, he wanted to spend a lot of uh, a lot of time on the skin and uh, one time his uh, friend Max he brought him some vegetable stuff for, for, for lunch and I said, What what the f and why you like have lunch, having lunch right now, you know, let's, let's, let's shoot him. And he was kind of mad, and uh, John, I remember, I said, look, John, look at me, look. 
Hey, come on, take it easy, guy. I can't do it because you missed out on like that. I just want to add that uh, he had twice as many lines in this picture as I had in my first picture. One before, I had four. <laughs> So uh, a couple of days ago, I I, uh, I myself was in a boxing match uh, here at the festival. <laughs> uh, I fought the director of football. I'm not sure if you're familiar, familiar with that man, but uh, so I got a little taste of it, and I was thinking, well, maybe maybe I'm gonna maybe I'm gonna, I'm gonna embrace this a little bit. So uh, Andre, can you talk a little bit about your uh, your physical train training regimen on a daily basis? Like if I want to get into uh, Ultimate Fighting Championships, for example. Uh, <laughs> What do you do on a daily basis as far as nutrition and also exercise? From my experience when I was in Bulgaria, uh, do more it's much harder and much uh, painful worse for me than like training, you know, because uh, uh, in my plan was, bro uh, at that time I was with uh, uh, Michael Moore and I had, I was supposed to have, I had a boxing debut in, a, in a March, but we spent a lot of time, time in a shooting movie and you know, I cancel my fight, and uh, I don't know. For me, like, easy, like, have three, four workouts a day, and like, spend all day in a in a in a in a in a set. Yeah. <laughs> but I enjoy it, and uh, hopefully, somebody put me in the movie again. I see how it is. You're you're afraid of me entering the sport. I see how it is. <laughs> Um, so I, I also have a, a question for you, Dolph. Uh, uh, as, you, as you might have known, people have gotten um, very disrespectful in movie theaters. Uh, and with this movie coming up uh, soon, um, uh, is there anything you would say to somebody if they were to watch Universal Soldier in the theater and you happen to be in that theater and they were talking loudly or they answered a cell phone? I mean, is there anything you would say or would possibly even do to them to uh, stop them from disrupting your experience? I must break you. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. No more stupid questions. Anybody have uh, any other real questions out there in the audience? All right, in the back. Uh, yes, yeah, a two-part question. Uh, one for uh, the director. I saw at the end that it was shot on red. Uh, I'm just curious if you shot the whole thing visually, why? Why, why did you just have to do a film print at the end instead of just project, or projecting digitally? And, oh, okay. Oh, and Dolph, I read a while ago on the internet that you have several PhDs. Is that true? Oh, okay. Let's do it again. I don't figure out my answer. Um, the first, the reason why you go to film is just because every theater is not equipped with digital projection. So, I mean, that's the main reason for it. Uh, I'd say that's the only reason for it. But, um, but it looks real good in the film. Red, red, I think, compared to uh, Genesis or Fire or a lot of those other systems, that red is the, is the first one that I've seen that really has the uh, color density and the palette and the contrast and all that, that, you, that. If you look at the film print of this, you would not know that it's uh, was shot digital in any way. So, but yeah, until every theater in the country has a digital projector, they uh, decide to make film prints. Well, I just want to add, well, I think it even makes it more intense than film in some ways, right? It's sort of, sort of even well, sharper in one way. Clear, yeah. yeah, it's um, like a hype, like a super reality 35 kind of print feeling. Anyway, yeah, no, I don't have any PhDs. I got a, I got a master's in chemical engineering. So I started, uh, I used, to, uh, I used to be smart back in the end of those days before I got hit too many times. Paul the Creek, Malone, and all the rest. And then, uh, uh, yeah. so, we'll got another question here in the sound. Hey, Alan, for Dolph, I know you've been uh, directing most of your own stuff in recent years. Uh, how does that experience, you know, having worked as a director for several movies, uh, does that change how you work when you come in as an actor and you're working with somebody else? 
well, you're very happy, you know. <laughs> you don't have to do all that other stuff. It's, uh, it's like a vacation. <laughs> you can focus on your acting, you know, and, and you really feel for the director, uh, and you understand what he's going through, and, and you're trying to help him out a little more, perhaps. If you have never directed, then you're kind of in your own space, worry all about your stuff, and you don't really see the bigger picture. I don't know, that's kind of how I feel, in a way. And, and um, yeah. Uh, and it's cool, actually, to have somebody else um, direct you, like even, it was John was terrific, and it was Stallone as well, like somebody who's calling you on your shit, you know, when you get lazy. Because you know, when you direct yourself, you know, you worry about everybody else more than yourself, and then you kind of kind of patch your own performance together, and you know, partially on the set, partially in the editing room. So um, I think it's it's a great experience to do both. So we probably have time for a couple more questions. Uh, I think somebody has a very urgent one there in the center. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> Was there an intentional Blade Runner reference in the movie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think that that, uh, I mean, that, that one moment is pretty clearly, uh, it's pretty clear. And, uh, you know, when I was preparing the movie and thinking about movies that inspired me and, and directions as far as just aesthetic directions I want to take it, you know, everything that Ridley Scott had done back in that, you know, I was certainly thinking a lot about um, early 80s sci-fi movies um, from score to production design, just to kind of feel um, scores like uh, from Tangerine Dream, doing Sorcerer back, uh, back when that came out, uh, you know, early John Carpenter, The Thing, you know, I was thinking about those movies and I was thinking about Alien, and I was definitely thinking about Blade Runner, of course. And um, you know, I, 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 my goal was to try to um, put all of this a little bit more in a uh, in a fleshy reality than um, if I was going to change it. <laughs> um, rather than say, uh, you know, the the first films, which you know were. were is you know the first Universal Soldier, which was very you know successful in its own right, what it was trying to do. But I guess I was just aesthetically trying to do something different. That one, and I was trying to focus a little more on the uh, Frankenstein aspect of it. And so when I thought about that and thought about the the plight of these poor creatures who are being asked to do uh, other people's dirty work, uh, I couldn't help but think of Blade Runner, and when it came time to uh, to to finish off the Doctor, you know, we when I guess when it was written, it was more he kind of he kills him, he, he crushes him. It wasn't overly defined, I don't think. And then when we got there on the set, and uh, I remember Dolph um, was doing it, and he just he he said, "How about if I just push up his glasses like this?" And I thought, well. Yeah, might as well do it. <laughs> <laughs> the first time. Do it. And so, yeah, I know, and some people have seen it and said, well, you know, you can't go with that. It's, it's Blade Runner. And I said, yeah, you know, of course it is. So, but I guess it's a, it's a loving nod to, to Blade Runner. So that's, that's, my, that's my take on it. Cool. <laughs> so uh, we got time for one more question. We're looking for a real doozy type question here, humdinger style. So anybody, anybody got that one? You think you got it, sir? I think I might have it. I think you got it. All right. Okay. Let it uh, rip. It's, it's directed at Dolph and, uh, and Andre. And that's, um, you commented earlier on the, uh, the effect that mixed martial arts has had on the, the perception of what a real fight would look like and how the public is aware of what real fights look like between real martial artists. Um, what kind of, where, where do you think the evolution can go further, possibly, with, with that in terms of fight choreography? And uh, how you would approach that in, in, in a fight, in a fight, and how it, it would be perceived in the film. Well, that's a that's a good question. That's you know, that's I guess it depends on the genre a little bit too, and who the fighters are. Because, for instance, you know, if we do a fight between us, it have to be a lot about power. A little bit like me and Jean Claude, which is I mean, 
Yeah, that fight worked because speed. Okay, good. Sweeps. <laughs> that that uh, it made you brains. No, but uh, that fight worked because you know it was. I think it had a good sort of like a lock, like a, like a wrestling uh, uh, thing going. But I think it depends a little bit because um, you know the Expendables have uh, one fight with Jet Li. And uh, well, actually, you're one and a half fights. <laughs> and uh, it's totally different because you know he's a smaller guy, and he does all kinds of other stuff. You know, and Stallone tried to kind of make him fight more real than he's done in some of his other fights. So it was kind of interesting. So I think it depends a bit on the artist, uh, the fighter, and the director. But I think it will get more um, more brutal, probably. And uh, you know, basically, what do you think, Andre? You do it for real. <laughs> the doctor taught it well. <laughs> Thanks, me too. John, what do you think? Yeah, John is the one who choreographed and his it's his uh is his baby, you know, so he has more to say about it. Um as far as fight choreography, you know, I think that uh if you look at um certainly like in the Bourne films, I think they did a, a really brilliant job of taking action in general, whether it was fights or car chases or all those things, and, and trying to ground it in a tangible reality. I think that is clearly a shift from what uh, went on perhaps in the 80s and 90s where the action was um, almost hyper-reality, and that, that, became the, the, that became the aesthetic mode for films. and. Um, and a, and a kind of a tongue-in-cheek aspect to it, which worked really well. I think, you know, Arnold saying a line and then doing something, um, that, that really created a mold for a while. And I think, again, you look at um, you look at the fight in the born uh, supremacy, which is really just a very, it's almost like, it's a very vicious, brutal fight where you're not even necessarily seeing every move that goes on, but you're kind of believing in the in the impact of all the blows. And so I, I just think it's about um, you know, film film tastes change all the time, but they, they're constantly evolving. So I think all film or, filmmakers see something like that. They see something like Children of Men, and they say, "Wow, that's uh, suddenly they grounded something in reality and presented it in a let's say." point of view perspective with children and men. Probably didn't think you could shoot a big battle scene from a single point of view where the explosions are happening in the deep background and we're just hanging with this one guy throughout this battle, but it's very powerful. So I think uh, it's, it's questions of point of view and it's questions of uh, what are you trying to, uh, what's the effect you're trying to give off with the sequences? And if you're trying to give off something that is, um, Entertaining, of course, but hard-hitting, powerful. Then it, you almost don't have to look much further than, well, what would this really be like if two guys who were, let's say, stronger than the average guy, really were going at it? You know, and that's. I think it, it really just starts from that. What's the so whether films continue to go that way or they may go a completely different way, like the, like the Matrix did or something like that. But they're all sort of. They're all equally valid. It's just kind of a it's kind of an aesthetic choice. I don't think it's gonna I don't know if you can get any more real than children and men, but you can uh, you can present it maybe in a different way. And then and then maybe a more artificial way will be a more interesting way next time around. There you go. Those of you that enjoyed it, please tweet about it. What, what, do we have a release date yet on the film? Uh, February. February. So we're getting a very, very early look at this. So <laughs> if, you, if you did enjoy what you saw, any uh, any good word on it will help because you know they, there's a theatrical release, but the size of the theatrical release is certainly influenced by people like you. It's why we brought it to this festival. It's why. You know, I was at Fantastic Fest watch sitting in one of these secret screenings two years ago, and uh, and I just know that there are some festivals that are uh, for a bunch of critics and a bunch of distributors and a bunch of trying to sell a movie. This one is simply about film fans and trying to get to the people who love movies 
And uh, this is the kind of movie that is catered directly towards you guys. So if you liked it, talk about it. It'll help us. Thank you. Thank you.